It's recording now. Yeah. We destroyed the trivia. Uh, I don't have to do anything. Just, just okay. John, you're in the way. Not 
what to execute. Hardware. Cubes. There are four stacks with five cubes each. Each player receives three white sheets of paper with instructions and one green cover sheet. How to play. Each sheet bears one instruction only and will make you move cubes from one stack to another. When you are finished executing your instruction, move the sheet to the back of your paper stack and continue with the next instruction. Your round is finished when the green cover sheet is back on top. You have won the round if at this point you have managed to have only one cube remaining on your left hand side. If no one succeeded, start a new round and repeat the process. Possibilities to act are limited, so certain patterns of movement seem to reappear. In order to influence the course of the game, players will try to intuitively predict each other's actions. But even a small change in one player's move, for example, altering the speed of the action, can crush the other player's predictions. To win, a player has to read the pattern and react quickly to the ongoing mutation. I am man and machine at the same time. I calculate the uncalculatable. I am an almost disinfector. <laughs> Just to read the instruction and execute it, and then they do it like once, 
and then they maybe they do it twice and then they realize okay that's going nowhere and then they start to see what the others are doing and then after a while they see like okay the same thing happens over and over again more or less like in every round there's like a small variation because you always have like two choices so um, the whole whole process the whole system changes um, but you still can get like a feeling um, when what happens so you start changing your own um, you start varying your actions and by that you're influencing the whole system and like it's really like a little magical that you, you do something different here and suddenly like at the end like something totally different comes out of it and, and that's what I really like about the game is that although you um, Although you can like um, you can't really predict um, the whole system, or it's too complex to be predictable, um, you can get like a gut feeling for it. And so, through using your intu intuition, uh, you will influence the game and uh, win it eventually. And so, in a way, you act like a simple machine, but you need to have your human intuition to win. Mm. That's more or less about the game and the game rules. Uh, now I want to talk about the like, design process. Um, and before I get into that, uh, maybe I should uh, sketch out like the setting we worked in. Uh, as I said, like uh, Till Bitfor, Jakob Penzer and me, uh, we did organ position shops at a festival in Potsdam called Play. And that's a, fe a festival designed for uh, children and youth. Um, they go there to uh, make games to learn how to make games, um, to get more media competence. Mm. And so there are like a lot of workshops and machining up, mm, videos playing, and, uh, and part of the concept is also that you can also watch um, artists like from the game industry, like, like how they make games. And so they invite three artists every year, and, uh, and people can like watch us on the game jam create a game. And and they invited Till and Jakob uh, uh, and me. And Till and Jakob don't have much, like, don't have so much clue about game design, uh, which turned out to be a gift. And I want to explain why. So Jakob is more like the tech savvy artist um, who can program, uh, and his main interests are like autonomous robots, emergent or generative systems, and um, who knows? Who knows? Generative, uh, generative systems. Okay, that's like um, these are systems where you define rules to produce something complex, which you likely wouldn't have anticipated. So it's like a basic, like, almost already like a game. You define some rules, and then something happens which you wouldn't have thought of before. And one famous example for this is like this church, this Gothic church, in in, in the Swiss. Uh, if you look at the arcs, they all like feel like they fit together, they are in harmony, but if you look closely, you see that like every arc is different, every arc has like a different pattern. And all these patterns are basically um, follow like a, the same rule set, but look totally different. And yeah, it's fast, fascinating that it's like, has been already done like, um, yeah, a few hundred years ago, uh, but this is like, yeah, now nowadays it's like uh, more like in the computer arts where this is like used. Um, so yeah, that's more or less like what Jakob is interested in. Uh, Till on the other hand uh, is like more like a traditional fine artist, but before he studied uh, theater and he is very interested in explaining the border between um, play and reality. So he wants the audience to be part of, of the play, or even maybe even be the core of our book. And a work he likes, for example, is the Roomtown Oracle, um, by the way, made by a Danish group. Uh, and this is like a huge space uh, trailer park, basically, where you can like. Uh, go and like walk around freely as a visitor, and you can like uh, speak and talk to the to the actors, um, and yeah, and everything like blends like a little bit, and it's like really open how you communicate with the actors. And um, although he like does 
doesn't do like any games. He still um, used like one uh, game in his one of his work too, which I really like. Uh, this was like there's like an annual art exhibition at the uh, University of Fine Arts in Berlin, and so every every student showcases the, the work there, and like lots of important people come there, and for some artists, some artists this is a chance to sell some paintings or sculptures or whatever. So he uh, built up like an Ill illegal casino in the university, and uh, with the intention to draw away all the visitors from the exhibition uh, into this casino, so they all like uh, just gamble instead of like looking at fine art. And um, yeah, and to also start discussions um, about like um, games and art. It was quite fun. Mm. So in me, um, yeah, it's sad, like I am um, a game designer, but I studied interface design. So human computer interactions are really interesting to me, as well as interactive media installations, also illustrations, and um, yeah, in game design. And there are plenty of games I could cite, uh, which like inspired me back then. But maybe one of uh, one of them was like uh, 16 Tons by Eric Zimmerman and Natalie. Um, how many of you do know this game? <laughs> Should I explain it? Okay, not too many. Uh, it's a great game. Uh, you should play it. Uh, you can download the instructions and play it at home or with your friends. Um, okay, let me try to explain it briefly. It's a four-player physical game where, um, where every player takes out three one-dollar notes out of his pocket. And every player has like two of these tokens, and you you like your aim, your like goal is to align your own tokens, and you can't move them. Only the other players can move your tokens. So what you do is you pay the other players uh, to move your tokens, and this is like round based. And um, what quickly happens is that that um, you might actually win the game, but you have like zero dollar less, and you may, might actually lose the game, and you have maybe like four dollars more than at the beginning, um, just because like of course the money like goes back and forth all the time, and no, there's like there's no rule uh, which says like in the game like okay what happens with the money afterwards like do people keep actually the money. Uh, actually keep it or do they give it back and so this this um, forces like a lot of discussions and um, yeah so like losing is, is suddenly something actually positive uh, if, if people like lay, um, make their own rules or like um, come up with the rules that everyone has to keep the money and um, another another game maybe I should want to quickly uh, show uh, mention is Ninja. Um, I think Ninja is known, right? Who, who doesn't know Ninja? Who knows Ninja? Okay, all, all the only time. Okay, it's like a physical fighting game. It's like a physical round based fighting game uh, where you I, I, I can't like explain it quickly now, but like where you stand like in a, in a big circle with a lot of people. Uh, and you try to clap, up, clap the hand of the others and you are only allowed to move once and then you have to freeze and then the next one and then it's the turn of the next one and what's so so beautiful about Ninja is that it's like um, it's a very picturesque scene to see like maybe 20 people posing in Ninja pose and like freezing in this pose and, and then like moving very quickly and uh, it's it's like really from the outside. If, even if you don't know the game, it just looks beautiful. It just looks um, interesting, and it gets you interested. Mm, so the physical games, but also like this emergent social interactions, which happens like in games like Six Tons, um, where people like because of an open rule set like start to discuss and and, and change the game, uh, were like really interesting to me. So to sum this up, like these are like more or less like some buzzwords which describe like our all like our interests, our, our three. And the reason why I told you.
through all this is we got I think like this different areas um, made us design um, a game we wouldn't have designed on our own otherwise um, because we all like influence each other and draw each other like in different directions. So for, for example, like we we started. Did I forget something? Um, so yeah, we basically started to talk like like you usually do, and um, and one idea which came up uh, was to have like this huge Rube Goldberg machine, a uh, Rube Goldberg machine, Rube Goldberg machine. Everyone knows what it is. Who, who knows? Yeah. Okay. Um, so we wanted to, uh, like, to have like this big, basically this big chain reaction, but where the players are part of the chain reaction, and it's like a never, like never ending chain reaction. Um, so once you start a game, you get like stuck in it, uh, or you have to find another player to replace your um, your place. Uh, so this was like a blend of like this three different interests. Uh, another idea we had was. Um, like a human-human interface where we designers would become the avatar. Um, so like the player would control us through a, through a regular game interface, uh, see us on our computer display or a TV, but they wouldn't know that we are actually humans. They would think like they would control like digital avatars. And, um, and of course we wouldn't like behave constantly like in a computer where like the rule set is defined and Mario is always jumping that high and it's never changing but we would of course change slowly our behavior and this would have confused the player a little bit and maybe uh, lead to a funny situation. Mm -hmm. And all this was like a plan between like um, uh, Jakob's interest for autonomous robots, uh, Till's performance interest and my interface uh, area. And like uh, a third idea we had to um, to make like this big choreography um, where all players become like little robots um, and move through the festival and interact with each other, but they would do so by having um, like some instruction or like a paper in their hand, and, and maybe they, they, this instruction would also like lay around or like be, be tucked somewhere and. Uh, we basically wanted that, like, like in Ninja, like, uh, it's like a picture from the outside, like a very picturesque, a very picturesque from the outside. That like you have like this 20, 30 people running around the room and like behaving like strangely, and and you don't know why what happens. And suddenly you you maybe get a paper, and suddenly you're like part uh, of the whole thing of the whole performance. And so yeah, we. Um, like all of these ideas, and like um, when we first uh, proceeded this one, and um, the first thing which came into our mind was like flowcharts for humans. And rem remember this: there was like this anti-formula for anti-formula formula for guarding off annoying advertisement calls. Um, so you know, it's like you get a call, and someone is asking you like if you are like I don't know. Yeah or you want to buy uh, or you upgrade your your I don't know um, some car policy or whatever and and there's like this this formula which offers you like step-to-step uh, -step instruction if someone calls you and annoys you uh, how to guard them off like like in a funny way so you this is in German of course but um, you start like uh, asking who they are you ask them like uh, if they can like uh, spell the name, uh, and then like if you did, did that, then you, you ask them where they did get, get the number, and depending on what they answer, you like go in a different path. And this was quite funny, uh, I think. And we did basically the same. We took like a flowchart, but like with instructions for humans like to to move around or do things, so not only like talk to someone, but really like uh, move through a whole building. And we first tried it out like on, our, on our, uh, ourselves, like we all did like a flowchart and then we passed it to us and 
every one of us had like to do what, what the paper said. And it was quite fun. Um, I don't want to go into detail what the flowchart said there, uh, besides this one maybe, um, where uh, you had like, a, sh like uh, a few sheets of paper in your hand and you walked around and, um, and you let like one paper fall and depending where it uh, fell, you would like turn around in the other direction, go uh, a few uh, steps and, and maybe even if, uh, if you like, if you encounter like a paper on the ground, you would pick it up, if not, you would do something else. And so this was like this loop where we tried to create like a situation where you always had to do something. And so we tried this out. Uh, this was already at, at a festival. Um, and, and we prototyped a little bit. Um, and what, what turned out, oh, we had, by the way, this lab codes, which are really important for us. <laughs> Because um, we bought, because we were like in the situation where everyone else was watching us, like doing this game, and we were sitting around most of the time, and people were saying like, "Yeah, what are you doing? Just sitting around." And and um, so and we felt like a little like like let rest, a rest a little bit. So we just went to the next store and bought like this lab coat, and suddenly like we were like the scientists, and everyone was like giving a little more respect from us. It was really strange, but it worked. Um, and saved us at a later point too. Uh, we'll tell you this later maybe. Uh, well, and so um, what we wanted to do with this, like letting the cards fall and like walking around, was that like the whole room would like people would like pick the, uh, the, the papers up and like walk around and, and do all this stuff. But uh, as we tested it, we just noticed that. Um, that there was like kind of no, there was no magic circle uh, happening. Like there was people were like not really following the instructions strictly because they were not really sure if they are now playing a game or doing just a stupid, stupid thing someone asked them to do. So um, or even if they followed the instructions, they didn't do it like very precisely, and it was really hard to maintain like a system, like a self-sustaining system. Um, where people like could decide really freely what, what they do or where they ignored some some instructions. So we get back like to scratch our heads and, and think. And maybe you see in the background there were like these boxes standing around like as decoration. And we thought like okay we have to um, make this the area smaller where the people play or like maybe we need some props you know something physical. Um, and so we started like to just make instructions to move these boxes, and and uh, we made like we had to suddenly like like one box there, one box there, and then we like uh, had like an instruction where you, you would like stack another box on the other, and suddenly we saw like oh yeah like now that we are so close to each other like just one or two meters away, um, the intended action flow is much faster, and I I'm not starting like questioning the instruction, but I'm. I'm, I'm doing it and it's quite a flow and it worked for us and from there it was basically just like a few design decisions more to create the game we had. Mm. Let me see. Like, oh yeah, that's like uh, uh, generative design or 
performance, like performance, or um, or like there are like emergent social interactions in there. You don't see this like necessary um, immediately. Um, and actually, actually, I don't care really if anyone like notices it's there. Uh, and I actually don't even care if they are still in the design of the game. But what I do care about is that they they were actually responsible that we did this design. Um, that it, the design derived from, from this idea. Um, and that's because um, if we had like other visions, like the game would, we would have made like different decisions uh, on the design. And it would have turned out to be a different game. And um, other works with non-game influences, I want to show, uh, like talk about briefly, like one of my favorite games in that category is like 4 minutes and 33 seconds of uniqueness from, from Petri. Um, who, who knows who plays this game? Okay, also not so many. Um, so this is a game um, where you basically start like a, a game, uh, then like a window opens, it's like black, and there's like a loading bar going from left to right, and it's going like really slowly, and then you click around and you try to do something and nothing, nothing happens, and then you realize, okay, you can just wait, and the bar gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and suddenly like the game closes and you're back on your desktop. Hmm. And then you start the game again, and uh, the same thing happens, like the loading bar goes from left to right, really slowly, and maybe if you're lucky, like after 4 minutes and 33 seconds, uh, you win the game. That's just a message you won. So what happens in the game is uh, that if you are, if you are the only player on the whole planet who plays the game this moment uh, for four minutes and thirty-three seconds, you win. The moment someone else starts the game, your game closes and you lose. And this, I asked Petri, and he said like, yeah, this. Uh, this game was like also like developed here at the um, Nordic Game Jam, uh, I think two or three years ago, for the topic, um, for the theme, as long as we have each other, we will never run out of problems. And he, he said like he wanted to come up quickly like with a really easy solution to that theme. Um, but also like um, um, a main inspiration were, was like Robert Rauschenberg, uh, he did like this really huge white paintings where you basically you just see like a white canvas and um, and this inspired him um, to, to try out how minimalistic uh, you can get with games and um, yeah I think uh, the game shows that yeah, yeah I think this inspiration um, shines through in the game, like it's really minimalistic, that's, that's the first thing I thought. Uh, but it's also like really touching in a way. For me it was like, I was really like proud or like like feeling like, oh wow, I'm really the only human in the world who really plays the game right now like this. Uh, I felt really special in, the moment, in, this, in this situation. And, um, uh, or like if someone like uh, uh, kicks you out, then like you have to immediately start to get like a, have a connection to this other one because you start like okay, do I start my game right now? Then like I kick the other guy out again, or do I wait four minutes and thirty three seconds until he finishes his game so I can finish my game? Mm. The Sims. Um, I think uh, one funny story I read uh, about the Sims was that the will rise will rise house burns down and he lost like literally everything he had like everything he bought and like a lot of notes and whatever and so he had to buy everything again like uh, old furniture clothes everything and like this this in the state of like consume, uh, consuming a lot of things uh, he came up with the idea of the sims where he like you have this house and you try like to buy a lot of stuff to like um, uh, yeah to get a proper house again and yeah super famous of course like a bread is like inspired by quantum physics and so there are of course games which aren't inspired 
um, by like or there are, are great games which are inspired by other games like Age of Impact so short before and so my point is just like that uh, this is just another way to approach game design like to get like draw inspiration from other areas because they will influence your your design decisions. Mm. Yeah, for example, Tetris was inspired by a toy, or Button and Jaws uh, were inspired by folk games. So of course, this works very very well as well. So um, what went good with Autumn Wissenschaft? Um, we uh, I'm extremely grateful that we won an award at Indicate for um, best interaction. And also, we were nominated for best game design there. Um, personally, I was like really happy to see Eric Zimmerman, the creator of Sixteen Tons, uh, having like fun with uh, Autumn Wissenschaft at the festival. And um, and there were also like other funny situations.